Well, this morning, as you can see, it's a little bit darker in here because the portal's been closed. Yeah, last night, just after we uh, set sail, one of the officers came round and uh, closed the portals because we were heading towards a storm and apparently we were going to be getting battered on this side. So, uh, yeah, they closed the portals so if the windows all get smashed in, <laughs> they'll get flooded. The weather doesn't seem particularly bad. It was raining last night and it's moving around a little bit today and, and you know, you can hear it swishing around occasionally in the, in the window there. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem too bad. But then again, I've not looked outside yet. Last night we had to put the clocks forward an hour because we're entering a different time zone. So uh, this morning when I woke up it was uh, a little bit later than I thought it would be, so I've missed breakfast. So the mission for this morning is to fill in this. So this is the slop chest um, form and uh, on here we've got this huge big list of different uh, things that you can buy like water and booze and cigs and you know chocolate and all that kind of stuff anything that they kind of buy in and uh, you get it at a discounted price so uh, this is for crew so i've just got to fill this thing in and then hand it in before 12 noon so uh, that's the mission for this morning the prices on here are just ridiculously good like stupidly good so uh, for a, a, a case of 24 cans of carlsberg for instance you can get those for six pound 30 so that's for the whole 24 cigarettes marlborough golds pack of 10 for £12.70, bottle of house red for £2.50 and the thing I'm looking for the most is uh, mineral water so you get 5 litre bottles and you can get a case of 24 of them for £2.70. <laughs> last night's gig went okay, we'd got uh, a decent dance floor and uh, we did quite a bit of pop stuff in the last two sets. It's all starting to take shape now, getting used to each other's playing, getting used to the pad, it's uh, getting a lot better. One of the downsides to coming on uh, this particular ship with this supernumerary status, this kind of non-crew, non-passenger, you know, this kind of grey area kind of status, is uh, that there's a little bit of a disconnect with us and the crew. On other ships we'd have a full run of the crew areas so we'd be able to go into uh, into the crew bar and all that kind of stuff but uh, on here I know there's actually not a, a proper crew bar um, they've got a kind of um, common room kind of area where they sometimes have parties and they'll arrange to get beers in there but there's not a, a proper bar as such uh, which is a bit of a downside for them. On other ships you'll get a proper designated crew bar and uh, sometimes they're huge you know and you'll get these great thriving uh, uh, ship crew communities, you know, this really really sociable, but on here it's really really different, you know, everybody's really really nice, but there's no real focal point, um, you know, for forging these kind of uh, social relationships. That said, it's good in a way because uh, it's just an excuse to drink more and I'm on a diet, so uh, <laughs> I'm kind of glad in a way. When I first started out on ships, I was in my mid-twenties and I was single and I was playing on ships that were uh, a lot of fun. So, as you can imagine, you know, reading between the lines, it was, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun, you know. I think if you're a little bit younger and you've got no responsibilities at all and, you know, you're single, it's, it's a really, really good job to have, um, especially as a musician. It's, it's really good. You get to play every single day. Um, you get to play a wide variety of things. You build up your repertoire. You build up lots of areas of your playing just from playing a lot uh, and then of course you get to travel you get to see a lot of places there are obviously a lot of downsides no matter what the uh, cruise line is um, you know and it's the same for everybody you know you're gonna be away from home for uh, prolonged periods of time um, if you've got friends and family back home you know you're not gonna be seeing them um, communication wise it's very cut off so uh, it's quite hard to keep in touch with people another problem you might get over prolonged periods is uh, is relationship issues you know if you uh, if you start to see somebody on board and then you break up you know the thing just turns into a whole drama because you can't go anywhere you're just stuck in this little bubble so uh, you know that's it that, that can be a real problem for people you know because then you've still got to work with each other you've got to see each other every day it's not like you can escape you know like go home or go somewhere else you know you're all stuck in here and uh, that that kind of thing um, is the same for you know many many different areas of life you know you that you just can't escape you know you're at the place where you work and you just have to deal with it you know it's very much like big brother in that sense you know when you see uh, you know the big brother tv series it's, it's it's pretty much like that but just on a bigger scale as musicians you generally get a pretty easy time of it compared with some of the other departments you know so people working in the salons and the shops um 
uh, food and beverages departments, all that kind of thing, uh, they generally have a little bit of a harder time with it because they're going to be less likely to get uh, off the ship and uh, the, you can't go up on decks as much, you know, so you're down in the bowels of the ship a lot. Um, it's, it's very different, the, uh, the dynamic. I don't think it's a secret anymore, the uh, fact that uh, working on ships there's pretty much a culture of long hours with low pay, and especially for some of the Indians and the uh, Filipinos and, you know, the uh, Asian staff, it's, uh, you know, a lot of hours that they work, and for, you know, for peanuts really uh, but that said uh, the amount that they get paid on here comparatively you know sending it home uh, it, it goes a long way uh, in India or in the Philippines compared to how you know our pay is over in England but still that's uh, you know that's no excuse <laughs> You know, because the hours are like really really long and uh, they're still not paying that much anyway I think one of the hardest things for the, uh, especially for the Asian staff, is that because you kind of cut off from civilization and you're in this little bubble, and because it has such a hierarchical, like a strong hierarchical uh, management structure, very much in the sort of naval kind of way, um, you know, people have stripes and things like that, you've got officers, all that kind of thing. It's, uh, it's, it, it can make you feel quite powerless because you're just because you're just so cut off from society you just don't feel like you have any power you've got the the managers above you and they can tell you to do what you want and especially for uh, for a lot of the Asian staff they they really need the work and they, they send a lot of that home and um, you know they're desperate for that money and so they kind of just become you know they don't want to say anything so I think in the past I mean things are a lot lot better now than they used to be in uh, years past but uh, I think that uh, you know you can tell just from that description that it's a bit of a, a brewing pot for uh, for bad <laughs> kind of decisions of bad things to happen for people and you know way in the past there's been a lot of suicides not a lot of suicides but you do get the odd suicide where um, and I think it's mainly because of this, the kind of mental turmoil that you can go through when you are cut off, you know, and there's, you know, they hardly ever get off the ship and a lot of the time they never go up on deck so there's not much natural sunlight and just living down in the bowels of the ship, you know, it can be, it's not really that good for you really. That's why I say that I'm really spoiled on here at the moment, nice cabin, I've got a cabin steward, it's, you know, just it's great we're doing very little work really you know uh, doing a, a lot less sets that I've done uh, than I've done in the past and um, you know you can do what you want on board and walk around just, you know get off when you want you know when we're in port it's great you know we don't have in port manning or anything like that when I mention in port manning um, and it goes by different uh, titles on different cruise lines um, that's referring to the fact that when you're in port um, when the ship's docked in port there needs to be a skeleton crew of, uh, of sorts so that in case there's an emergency anything happens so they have to have a certain amount of, uh, of people on board and uh, so generally the different departments uh, certain people in those departments take turns so they have to stay on board all day while uh, the other people can get off and have shore leave um, so that's just you know it's just one of those things people have to deal with we don't have to do that on here but on different cruise lines uh, you would have to do that that's why it's a little bit misleading to tell people that oh you can go on a cruise well go work on a cruise ship you'll go see the world and then you go off and then you end up with import manning in all the uh, different ports that you want to see and uh, there's not much you can do about it I mean you can sw switch with certain people but uh, it just depends whether it's a really popular port you know I wish you could it's spring.